We want to welcome you to another Haynes Ministries of Word and Due season. I'm Steve Haynes. And I'm Susan Haynes. And I'm Danielle Vaughn. And Danielle's our praise and worship leader for Hope Family Church. And tonight we're going to be going over the last two chapters of 2 Corinthians. We're going to go over Paul's vision and his thorn. Paul had a thorn in the flesh and, and Paul had concern for the Corinthians. And then he's going to give final warnings and final greetings. But I think before we go any further, we're going to have Susie pray and just invite the presence of the Lord. Then we're going to get on with uh, the Bible study. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the privilege to join together and to learn your word. Father, we pray that you would enlighten the eyes of our understanding and we will see what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us t tonight through your word. And God, we pray that every need of every person that is watching will be met tonight. And Lord, thank you for your anointing and thank you for the uh, enlightening of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you're watching, or if you're watching an archive, uh, grab your Bible and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll be going over 12 and 13. And tonight we're going to finish 2 Corinthians, and then next week we're going to start on the book of Acts. Uh, that's an exciting book of the Bible, and, you, and if you're listening, you don't, want to, you don't want to miss the book of Acts. But I'm reading from the New International Version, and Paul is talking about his vision and his thorn. He had a thorn in his flesh. Uh, anyway, in 2 Corinthians 12, uh, well, let me back up just a little bit. Paul is talking about his sufferings. You know, a bunch of these uh, false teachers, false apostles, you know, they were wondering, well, you know, if Paul suffered so much, is he really an apostle? I mean, does an apostle really go through all this? And, you know, these uh, super apostles weren't really going through any suffering, and and they were looking at it like, was well, he really of God, you know, and such? And he may not have been as flamboyantly speaking as, as they were. Yeah. And so uh, these false apostles had come into the Corinthian church uh, trying to, um, well, preach another doctrine, really. They were trying to say things that weren't right, and they were trying, evidently, they were trying to diminish um, Paul's authority that he had in the church. And so... Uh, Paul, through throughout Second Corinthians, actually he was trying to prove himself to the people, yeah. and where 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 he didn't really like boasting about himself, he reluctantly boasted to prove himself. And there are times in our lives where we have to, we don't like to brag about ourselves, but there are times when have you ever heard the expression "the squeaky wheel gets the grease," yeah. you know, and. And there's certain people that because they, they, they're puffed up and bragging about themselves, people do pay attention to them. And then the ones that are quiet and meek don't get the attention. Yeah. And that's not right. But, but so Paul was having to, to prove himself all over to them yeah. because he had brought the gospel of Christ. He had brought the word of salvation to them. And so in his boastings in, in chapter 11, verses twenty. 2 through 33, he included all his sufferings for Christ. He did. That he did for Christ. He was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He Le was stoned. Left for dead. He was left for dead, but he kept on preaching. And uh, and we were talking last week that there are, are ministers that are people, Christians that live in third world countries that go through persecutions more than we may experience in our country right. and they show each other their marks <laughs> yeah where they've been beaten for the gospel and yeah. they're proud of those where they've suffered because they they feel like they're um they're blessed to have uh they're proud to have suffered for the cause of christ yeah. and so paul was saying you know look look what i'm doing for god for you, and look what i'm doing for you and besides that he said uh he said, the, the care of the church is on me. You know, I may appear to be, be weak to you, but I keep, you know, wow. He appears to be weak. Look what he's gone through for Christ. I consider him a very strong man of faith. Oh, yeah. To have been jailed, beaten, shipwrecked, <laughs> oh, yeah. and stoned, and, and, yeah. and he's still persevering 
He didn't quit and uh, give up and run home. He had this thorn in his flesh we're going to talk about here in a minute. And some Christians, if they're suffering from some kind of affliction, you know, they're, they're all the time saying, why God, why God, why God? And, and they might not want to go on with the gospel. But Paul had this thorn in his flesh and he just kept going. That's right. He just kept going. He didn't complain. I mean, he prayed about it, but he didn't, you know, complain or He whatever. just kept right on going. He just kept going. He now, didn't say, well, I can't preach tonight. I got a sore throat. or Yeah, or because I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm sick or, or whatever it might be. But we're going to talk about that here in just a minute. And uh, so grab your Bibles and sit back and don't touch that mouse. And, and we're going to just go with the flow of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, in Second Corinthians 12, uh, starting in verse 1, it says, I must go on boasting. That's why I had Susie talk about his sufferings and stuff. He, he, he's boasting sarcastically, if you will. You know, talking about these, super, these false apostles, these false teachers and such. Anyway, it says, I must go on boasting, although there is nothing to be gained. You know, he said, hey, I can boast, but there's nothing to be gained. I mean, what good does it do? I mean, these super apostles, these false teachers were boasting and doing this and doing that. But what, you know, he's saying, well, what is it? What is, there's nothing to be gained. It says, I will go on to visions and revelations from the Lord. You know, these false teachers hadn't said anything about that. But Paul said, hey, look, I've went through all these sufferings. I've done all this. I've been through all this and all that. Let me tell you about the visions and the revelations that I've gotten from the Lord. You know, it says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago was caught up to the third heaven. A man in Christ is Paul. This is him. He was caught up into the third heaven. And if you're watching and you don't know what the third heaven is, uh, the first heaven is the atmosphere of the earth. The second heaven is the universe. The third heaven is where God dwells. So he was caught up to the third heaven where God dwells. He was caught up to heaven. So uh, whether it's in the body or out of the body, I do not know. Uh, some commentators think that it could have been when he was stoned and left for dead that he left his body and went up to heaven and and, and saw all these visions and revelations. And we read about that in the book of Acts. Yeah, we read about that in the book of where Acts. Where they were stoned and left for dead, and the brethren gathered around him and prayed for him. And as so many, many people believe he really was dead. Yeah, that he was. And this, is what ha this was uh, what happened. He was yeah. caught up into the third heaven. And we believe that God raised him back. Amen. Uh, only God knows. And I know that this man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, but God knows, was caught up to paradise. That's another name uh, for heaven. Uh, actually, paradise was a place where the Old Testament saints stayed until Christ went to the cross, and then he led captivity captive, and he led him up to heaven. But here, they're, he's using it as another name for heaven. As another name for heaven, yes. And anyway, it says he heard inexpressible things, things that man is not permitted to tell. He heard things so glorious that God told him he wasn't even permitted to tell what he saw and heard. Wow. So I will boast about a man like that, and he's still talking about himself. But I will not, oh, well, he says, but I will not boast about myself except about my weakness. Weaknesses. Yeah, I hear he didn't actually say this was himself, but we believe it was. Yeah, you know. it, it was really the Apostle Paul. Yeah. But uh, what he's saying here is, I will boast about a man like that, but I will not boast about myself except about my weaknesses. And he's getting ready to talk about his thorn in the flesh. You know, his thorn in the flesh, you know, God permitted that thorn in the flesh to, to transpire. Uh, it could be because... Paul had seen these visions and 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 all this stuff in heaven that uh, God wanted him to remind him that he's not self-sufficient in himself, but his sufficiency is in God. Well, and also I think what I think that God just wanted him to trust him. Yeah. And and in our lives, we will go through trials. I'm just going to be honest. Yeah. I'm a woman of faith. 
And God has healed me and brought me through a lot, but I still went through a lot. And all of us will uh, go through some kind of a trial or affliction where you will have to trust and believe God to take care of you no matter what things look like yeah. on the yeah. outside. You'll just have to believe God and His Word is true. And I think, um, yes, because Paul saw, saw so many uh, visions and he had so and many revelations. revelations of the Word, and God used him in such mighty ways that um, he had to work that's why it was against his nature to boast. Yeah. Even though he was having to do it to prove himself, it was against his nature because he was a humble man. But um, also, he uh, kept himself humble and he realized he was a man and he did go through trials and he had to just look to God and trust him. Yeah. See, Paul didn't really like boasting about himself. That's why he said, except about, he wanted to boast about his weaknesses, you know. Because his weaknesses glorified God. Glorified he, could, he, God. he just wanted to glorify God. Uh, see, in verse 6, it says, Even if I should choose to boast, I would not be a fool, because I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain, so no one will think more of me than is warranted by what I do or say. Listen to this. It says, To keep me from becoming conceited because of these surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Uh, so it says to keep me from becoming conceited, uh, uh, conceited because of these great revelations and such, there was a thorn in his flesh. Uh, I want to read from Galatians 4. 13 through 15. You know, I don't know what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. Uh, some commentators say, well, it could have been headaches from malaria. It could have been this. It could have been that. Some say it could have been eye disease. Uh, we don't know. It could have been. We don't know. It could have been depression. Yeah. Could have been, you know, I mean, have you ever been depressed? God wants us to rise above it and trust him and go on and do his will. We won't know till we get to heaven, but we do know that Paul had a thorn in the flesh, and it was from a messenger from Satan. But anyway, in, in Galatians four thirteen, it says, As you know, it was because of an illness. See, he had something wrong. That I first preached the gospel to you. Even though my illness was a trial to you, you did not treat me with contempt or scorn. Instead, you welcomed me as if I were an angel of God, as if I were Christ Jesus himself. What has happened to all your joy, I can testify that if you could have done so, you would have torn out your eyes and given them to me. You know, I mean, was it his eyes? Did he have an eye disease? And they say, hey, you know, you would have given me your eyes to, to help me through this? Or, or what it was, was it? was something that was apparent. Something that was but, apparent. But he went on and preached the gospel, and they accepted him as a man of God. And they didn't worry about any physical problem he was having or infirmity. They wanted to hear what the Holy Ghost was saying through him. Amen. And that's the way we need to be. No matter what comes about in our lives or what trial we go through, we need to be determined we're going to do what God's called us to do no matter what. Um, and as we're talking about weakness, let me recap from 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 26 through oh, 27 or 8 here. It says... Uh, Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. 
uh, he chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are. But he, uh, he chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. See, the strong can boast, but, but you know, Paul was boasting in his weakness because it's then that he's strong because he was dependent on God's power. Yeah, that's right. Even though he might have had an illness or something wrong with him physically, God still worked through him mightily. So we got to keep that in mind. Yeah, so Amen. we, we got to know that God's word's true no matter what goes on in our lives. Yeah. I remember years ago, uh, whenever my oldest was like 18 months old, I was suddenly struck with um, arthritis. Yeah. And it affected every joint in my body. I couldn't walk. I couldn't hold my baby. I couldn't uh, do anything. I remember yeah. my husband carrying me to the bathroom. I mean, I couldn't do anything. It just suddenly came upon me. Yeah. And, and you know, my I remember my mom taking me to the doctor, and I had to use a wheelchair and all that. And I remember this fear came on me, this fear. And I remember looking out the window and saying, God, your word says, by your stripes, I'm healed. And, and this fear, you know, just overwhelmed me. And I said, your word's true. I know your word's true. What's going on? And it was just like something rose up on the inside of me. And I thought, well, bless God, I'll preach the gospel from a wheelchair if I have to. Yeah. And as soon as I made that resolve in my spirit and in my heart, as soon after that, I was healed. Yeah. I mean, was. I, I was healed I'm, completely and totally, yeah. you know. And, and But it's just like we have to trust God. Yeah. No matter what's going on, we cannot let it fear overwhelm us and control our lives yeah because yeah. god did not give us the spirit of fear amen. that's right and amen. i just think that's awesome amen. to have so much faith in god that you're healed through that yeah i agree yeah and i'm an eyewitness she was but she, you know we do go through things and, and paul was trying to say it's not what i've gone through and it's not my weakness that you should be looking at. You should be looking at the power of God and the word of God yeah. and how he's using me. Yeah. See, they were looking at his weakness, his illness, and saying, yes. man, you you know, we don't have that. You know, why should you, how could you be a man of God if you're, <laughs> you know, going through, you know, this and that. and uh, You know, that's so shallow. You know, I... I and here he was pl plowing the way for them. Yeah. He was, you know, plow, plowing the way of the gospel, so, so to speak, for them. So, well, let's go on. We're going to talk about Paul's concern for the Corinthians. In did you have anything else to say? No. In verse 11, it says, I have made a fool of myself, but you drove me to it. See, he, Paul was being sarcastic when he was boasting about himself. I mean, as far as his... He didn't want to boast about he himself. He didn't want to boast about himself, but they were driving him to it. He says, <laughs> but you drove me to it. I ought to have been commended by you, for I, I am not in the least inferior to the super apostles, even though I am nothing. The things that mark an apostle, signs, wonders, and miracles, were to done among you with great perseverance. How were you inferior to the other churches except that I was never a burden to you. Forgive me this wrong. See, he's still using a little bit of sarcasm. Uh, when he says he was never a burden to you, he's talking about he didn't expect him to feed him or clothe, or clothe him or house him or anything. He was a tent maker by trade, and then to keep from being a burden to some churches, he would make tents for a living instead of collecting offerings for the gospel. And then sometimes other churches would willingly give him an offering. So he really wasn't much on taking offerings from the Corinthian church. So that's another he did, thing. These, he humbled himself and, and yeah, didn't do that much. That's another thing these super apostles were making remark about. It. Well, he's a tent maker. He doesn't, you know, how can he be the apostle of the Corinthian church, you know, and and, but he's the one that started the Corinthian church. Yeah, and that. God did, and God performed many notable signs and wonders to confirm the word that he preached. Yeah. Too. Uh, Regardless and, of what infirmities or problems he may have encountered. We'll read verse 12. Mine says, the things that mark an apostle are signs, wonders, and miracles. Uh, and that was done among them with great perseverance. How, how does your Bibles read? Verse 12. 
Mine's the same as yours. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, truly, this is a new King James Version. Truly the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance. Huh. Perseverance, that means that he had to keep on. I mean, he had to patiently keep yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, and uh, with all perseverance and signs and wonders and mighty deeds. Yeah. So they saw signs and wonders yeah, and mighty they, they deeds it. after yeah. he preached. God, you know, over and over in the New Testament, God confirmed his word. Yeah. With signs and wonders following. Yeah. But uh, in verse 14, it says, Now I am ready to visit you for the third time, and I will not be a burden to you. In other, in other words, he's still not going to collect from them because what I want is not your possessions, but you. After all, children should not have to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. So I will very gladly spend for you everything I have and expend myself as well. If I love you more, you will you will you love me less? Be that as it may, I have not been a burden to you. Yet crafty fellow that I am, I caught you by trickery. Did I exploit you through any of the men I sent you? I urged Titus to go to you, and I sent our brother with him. Titus did not exploit you, did he? Did we not act in the same spirit and follow the same course? Uh, I was reading comment commentary, and you know, and so they were saying, well, these super apostles and some of the Corinthians were saying, well, then you, you didn't get money from us by preaching the gospel, but you got money from us somehow by tricking us. You know, <laughs> and so... Uh, you know, he's he, he's asking, well, did Titus or or any, you know or any of those guys I sent did they exploit you? You know, they they didn't do the same thing either. They they didn't do it either. Uh, did we not act in the same spirit and follow the same course? You know, they did the same thing. He didn't get any money from them from trickery or from anything else. Uh, he did it uh, by the power of God and by making tents and. And uh, that's how he made his living. And then he'd preach and expend his own self. You know, he'd work all day and preach all night or vice versa. And and uh, so he wasn't a burden to these Corinthians. In verse 19, it says, Have you been thinking all along that we have been defending ourselves to you? We have been speaking in the sight of God as those in Christ and everything we do. Dear friends, is it for your strengthening? For I am afraid that when I come, I may not find you as I want you to be, and you may not find me as you want me to be. I fear that there may be a quarreling, je jealousy, outburst of anger, factions, slander, gossip, arrogance, and disorder. I am afraid that when I come again, my God will humble me before you, and I will be the grieved over many who have sinned earlier and have not repented of the impurity, sexual sin, and debauchery in which they have indulged. We're going to start here in chapter 13, just a minute, but, you know, if you remember the Corinthian church, it was full of sexual immorality, and a lot of these Corinthians had become saved and had come out of this. But some of them would kind of slip back into that, you know, and God doesn't want us to be guilty of impurity or sexual sin and debauchery. And, uh, and many of these have gotten back into it and indulged, and I'm sure these false teachers had too, you know, these false super apostles, you know. Uh, did you have any? Uh, yes, I wanted to say, um, you know, you're bringing up the point that the Corinthians were from this kind of background because that's how they worshiped their idols and things were through sexual sin. Yeah. And we need to be careful because we come out of many cultures, Christians yeah. do. And just because we come out of a certain culture, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our culture should change because this becomes our culture. Amen. And if something that we're doing, well, it, you know, if, if there's something you do, you're doing that doesn't disagree or it's not immoral or, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But if what you've been brought up in and raised in is contrary to the word of God, then it is immoral and you need to stop doing it. Yeah. And don't yeah. say, well, that's not the way I am. That's not the way I was raised. So what? I mean, 
We come out of, Christians have come out of all different backgrounds. Amen. We see reading out of here. We see Greeks. We see um, Hebrews. We see yeah. um, all different. We see um, uh, people that had no religion. You know, that, yeah. that they talked about on that island, was that island that they were shipwrecked on. Barbarians, you know, they, you know, yeah. people that didn't necessarily have any kind of scruples or morals or upbringing. They came from all backgrounds. But when they accepted the Lord, they started listening to the teachings of the Holy Spirit yeah. through the Word of God. They started, you know, learning the Bible and, and they have a new code, a new code to go by. And like I said, if you have a certain culture that, that and certain things you do, you know, they're not in conflict with the Word of God. There's nothing wrong to keeping with that. But if you're doing things like fornication and adultery and using foul language and, and things like that, that don't agree with God's Word, you need to change your ways. Yeah. Amen. And the word repent means to change. Yeah. When you repent of your sins, you change your ways. And you can do that. Amen. Once you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the power to live a holy life. Amen. Definitely. Amen. Well, we're going to start Second Corinthians, uh, Corinthians chapter 13. This is the last chapter in that book. And this is Paul's final warnings and his final greetings. And it says in verse 1, This will be my third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I already gave you a warning when I was with you the second time. I now repeat it while absent. On my return, I will not spare those who have sinned earlier or any of the others. Since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet he lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, yet by God's power we will live with him uh, to serve you. I'm sorry. Yet by God's power we will live with him to serve you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. See, we need to examine ourselves. Are we committing sexual sin? Are we doing Are we the, getting in pride? Yeah. Are we, bless God, I've always done it this way. I'm not going to change my way. Yeah. We, need to, we need to examine ourselves and make yeah. sure that we're being sensitive to the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It says, examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you, realize, do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that we have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not do uh, anything wrong. Not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right, even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever we are weak, but you are strong. And our prayer is for your protection perfection this is why i write these things when i am absent that when i come i may not have to be a uh, to be harsh in my use of my authority the authority the lord gave me for building mm -hmm. you up not for tearing you down mm -hmm. uh, finally brothers goodbye aim for perfection listen to my appeal be of one mind live in peace and the god of love and peace will be with you Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Uh, he's using the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit here at the very end. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, you know, referring to the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. So, and mine says amen. Okay. Amen. <laughs> Susie, Susie says amen. <laughs> amen, so be it. Uh, we've uh, gone through 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians, and those are great books of the Bible. And if you're watching, uh, you want to go back and read those if you haven't been with us throughout the whole thing, or you can visit our archives and, and, uh, and go through the whole series with us. Like I said, next week, 
We are going to start on the book of Acts, the first chapter. So if you're actively following us, well, start reading your Bible. The book of Acts, the first chapter. Uh, I don't know if we're going to do more than one or two. I don't know if we're going to do two chapters or not. We'll just play it by ear. Uh, I know we'll do one. So do that. And once again, uh, I want to remind each of you that uh, we have church this coming Sunday at 6 p.m. Central Time. And we want you to be there, be there with your Bible and be there ready to receive from the Word of God because it's our prayer that we preach and teach by divine revelation. God may have something for you to hear at that very moment. Amen. Amen. So uh, Susie's probably got a few announcements and, and I'm going to turn it over to her as, as always. We always have a, a, if you want to call it a sinner's prayer or a prayer of forgiveness, whatever you want to call it, if someone's watching and you don't know Jesus, we're going to give you the opportunity to get to know him today because today is the day of your salvation. Amen. With these earthquakes going on and all this stuff going on around the world, I mean, we have earthquakes here in Oklahoma. Uh, you know, we just had another one, what was it, Yes, last night. Last night. Uh, Jesus is coming. The time is getting short. The rapture of the church is getting ready to happen. Uh, Jesus is getting ready to take us out of this world. You want to be right with God. You don't want to be left behind. Amen. So here's my wife. Uh, so God bless. Well, praise God. Um, yes, as Pastor Steve was saying, we have been experiencing earthquakes, which is something unusual for the area of the country that we live in. And um, we've had small earthquakes three days in a row. Um, some areas in, in our area, it has actually knocked bricks off of walls and hasn't done any major destruction yet, but it is kind of uh, scary to a lot of people. And um, in Matthew chapter 24, I think it's verse seven or eight, you know, it talks about the, the last days and it talks about rumors of wars and, and it talks about earthquakes and uh, it, it talks about them like they're birth pains and that means that uh, something's getting ready to happen. So like Pastor Steve said, this is the time to examine your heart and, and look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Get your life right with God. And you know, Paul in, verse, in chapter 13 of 2 Corinthians, uh, verse 7, he says, I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but you should do what is honorable, though we may seem disqualified. For we do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. For we're glad that when we're weak, you are strong. And that this, we pray that you will be made complete. And Paul was saying, you know, when it all comes down to it, I don't care what you think about me. I don't care if you think I'm weak or not. I just want you to live for God, live righteously and do what's right. And, and that's what we need to do. And in this day and age, we need to look to Jesus. We need to stay in the word of God. Yeah. You know, there's, there's people that around us, um, we have a very dear friend of ours that recently is just really backslid and it's really hurt our hearts you know because we can't believe that they would do the things that they were doing but any one of us if we depart from the faith and don't look to jesus and his word we're going to slip and the enemy doesn't come in obviously to someone that's trying to live upright he slips in yeah. little compromises that you're making in yeah. your life yeah. little things oh well it won't hurt if i just look at this pornography for five minutes. I just want to see what it is. Don't do it. Don't let the devil have any kind of little keyhole to get into yeah. your soul. Little foxes spoil the vine. That's right. Guard your heart. You need to stay far away from temptations. If you've had, don't say, oh, well, it won't hurt me this one time to go in the bar. Maybe I can be a light there. 
no, you don't need to do that. No, exactly. You don't need to. You can steer away from that bar. Yeah. You know, especially if God's delivered you from alcoholism or something, I'd oh, find yeah. another way to go home if you're tempted. You know, Joseph in the Old Testament, he, he ran from sin when he was tempted. He literally ran yeah, from he sin. Did. And God wants us to be like that. And you're saying, but, you know, I don't seem to have that power. I don't seem to have that desire. But these earthquakes are scaring me, Susan. So what should I do? This is the time to get right with God. Amen. So, like Pastor Steve said, today is the day of salvation. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God didn't send his son into the world to destroy he, the world. He sent his son into the world that the world through him might be saved. God loves you. He cares about you. He gave his most precious possession, his only begotten son, Jesus, for you. Jesus came to this earth and showed us the way to God the Father. He died on that cross as a penalty for our sins. He didn't deserve it. He was sin free. He did it for us. Yeah. And on the third day, he rose again from the dead so that we can rise up and we can live for Jesus. We have the power to live for him. I want you to pray this prayer for me. If you never asked Jesus, come in your heart and forgive you of your sins. Or if you've gotten off track, and, and use this prayer as your rededication yeah. to the Lord. And Danielle and Steve are going to help me pray this prayer with you. Father in heaven, Father in heaven, thank you for sending your son Jesus. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. To die on the cross for my sins. Thank you for raising him up from the dead. Thank you for raising him up from the dead. That I might have the power. That I might have the power to walk in a new life. To walk in a new life. Jesus, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my sins. And come into my heart. And come into my heart. Be Lord of my life. Be Lord of my life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If you prayed that prayer and you believed it in your heart, you're a child of God now. Amen. This is the time. There's a lot of things going on in our world. So you need to have a time that you spend with God in His Word, reading yeah. it, a time talking to God, praying. Well, Susan, I don't know how to pray. You pray. You say, Father, in Jesus' name, and you talk to him. You talk to him like I'm talking to you. He's a friend. He's your friend. He's yeah. there. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Amen. And and join us um, Join us Sunday at 6 o'clock for our, our live streaming church service at HanesMinistries.org. And join us for our Bible study ne next week at 7 o'clock Central Time. And, and study the word with us. And, and, and this is the time you need to get to know, you need to have some kind of a Bible reading plan or a Bible study plan where you study God's word. This would be a good start for you. Yeah. And, and if you're a baby Christian or you've been a Christian for many years and you've always wanted to know more about the Bible, we have on our website archives where we're, we're going through the Bible book by book, chapter by chapter, verse by verse. Join us. Uh, have a certain time every day or several days a week or something that you're going to study your Bible or just join us Tuesday night. Have a time that you're reading your Bible. I mean, you should read your Bible every day, but have a study plan for God and spend time with the Lord. God bless you and you have a wonderful week. And once again, I just want to remind everybody that we do have prayer meeting on Wednesday nights. And if you have any prayer requests, you email us at HanesMinistries at gmail.com. Or you get on our website where it says contact us, and you can send a little email from that too. And uh, we've already got some prayer requests in. We're going to be praying over those tomorrow night. And we just want to thank you. We love you. May God uh, richly bless you. Until next next time, we'll see you. God bless.